So our subject today is the art of appreciation. And it's a very, very deep subject and also a very controversial subject. Thanks. Um, because there are very, very different ideas about this subject. So I'd like to first of all present some of the definitions that are used and also to show you that because we use different definitions according to different perceptions and perspectives, very often it produces misunderstanding and um, disagreement. So I think that one of the things that's very useful is to resolve some of this. It's um, a subtle thing because appreciation can be used in many different ways. For example, there is the word praise. See, if you appreciate someone or you praise someone, is there any difference? If you praise someone, it means you are making them to know by speaking. Um, so suppose you are praising someone and that person is there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so you, you praise that person, you say what you're doing is very good and it's very helpful and it's very useful and you're highly talented and all of these things. And that person will feel appreciated, yes? Um, another way of doing it is by some gestures. You may come with a bunch of flowers and then they will feel, ah, oh, yes, I'm appreciated because I was given a bunch of flowers or a box of chocolates or some other gift, you know. And um, then on the other hand, we have the question of spiritual knowledge and spiritual practice. Because appreciation, say you want to appreciate someone, that's one thing, Someone wants to be appreciated by you, that is also a hunger, I see. And so, in some cultures, especially in Western culture, the um, method <coughs> of appreciating people has been ritualized in a particular way. And in India, the method of appreciating people has been ritualized in a different way. And in both cultures, it's been ritualized. In Western culture, I think that there is a common understanding that if somebody does something good, then it's good to appreciate them by giving them a prize or um, uh, making them well known and putting them in the newspaper, um, putting them on TV, some of these various different things. And so what happens is a person has the feeling that they've made it when they are appreciated, do you think? And then what happens also is you may do something for which you are appreciated and then after some time you may do something and uh, appreciation doesn't come or it doesn't come in the way that you expect. And then at that time, do you feel that you're not appreciated? 
You see, very many people, they feel that if the signs of appreciation are there, then I'm appreciated. And if the signs are not there, then I'm not appreciated. And so from a spiritual perspective, it could be said that these um, signs or rituals of appreciation create a dependency. That if you are appreciated, you feel good. And if you are not appreciated, you resent it. Uh, maybe you may feel this other person is appreciated and their idea is taken up and, and what they're doing is uh, being used and my idea is not being taken up and what I'm doing is not being used so therefore um, I'm not recognized. You know, sometimes people experience this. And uh, it's quite often understood that this is one of the tests that we need to um, become experienced in, in spiritual practice. And another thing that happens, I'm sure many of you must have experienced this, that you are doing something that you think is uh, n no big deal. You just get on with it, you enjoy it, it's your hobby, you do it and you don't expect anything from it. You don't expect even anybody would notice it. You just go on doing your thing. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, you're highly appreciated, you know? And somebody starts talking about you as if you're the most wonderful thing that's happened and you are very surprised because you thought you were just doing something, nothing, no big deal, but somehow, you got greatly appreciated. Or maybe you thought, no, this is only my duty. You see. So this also happens. Then, um, another kind of appreciation I'd like to put before you. Um, whenever Bab Dada comes, a different zone or combination of zones comes here a few days before to do all the arrangements. And in the process of doing that, there's something called a Sanman Samaro, which is a ceremony of offering respect uh, to Dadi. And this is a very interesting kind of ritualized um, gesture of appreciation and it's very elaborate ceremony and as you know in India we have the capacity to make extremely elaborate ceremonies which involve a lot of gifts and um, dances and um, dressing daddy up with um, jewelry and uh, crowns and um, shining shawls and all of these things. So this is also a, a, a ritualized form of appreciation for um, Dadi, Baba, the Yagya, many, many things, but it's all focused on the, um, not really the person of daddy, but also the position of daddy. So this is also a gesture of appreciation. And it's an appreciation, not necessarily of something anyone in particular has done, but an appreciation of um, their relationship with the yagya. And Baba very often mentions to the group who is being uh, who, who is doing the service of um, all the people who come in terms of the arrangements, the food, the, uh, the hall, how, how all the decoration is and, and, and all the transport and so many things have to be arranged. I suppose there are, <coughs> say, about 15,000 people come 
uh, to see Baba, Baba's children come and there will be about 4,000 sevadharis who were there just making all the arrangements and, uh, and then in the middle of that there'll be this big elaborate ceremony which is not an appreciation in the way that I was mentioning before someone does something and they get appreciated or they expect appreciation but it's a sort of large-scale um, expression of an appreciation that I, the soul, am a Brahmin and I'm part of this and this is my contribution and I am proud to have the possibility that I can do this. And not just one individual, but collectively, you see. So that is a another kind of appreciation in which um, because it's so elaborate and there's so many people involved um, if you're uh, or any kind of negative feeling that somebody might have um, may not be connected with oh I didn't get appreciated I did something but I didn't get appreciated but it might be more like in the choreography of the ritual I didn't get to, you know, give a flower or light a candle or some of the gestures that are connected with the ritual, you see? And so in the subject of appreciation there's many elements that we need to consider and another area that I want to present before you has to do with appreciating the things that Baba has told us about what is really happening. Uh, I've noticed Baba has been mentioning uh, quite a bit this season and the last season about how we need to um, acknowledge and um, appreciate that uh, Baba is asking us to develop the consciousness of being an instrument. And he is saying that the instrument is given some gifts. Uh, and, and Daddy Janki has been also talking about that. You, you may have a talent, you may have a gift, you may have a special capacity, and the presence of this capacity allows you to do something which is um, laudable, which people could appreciate. And then Baba says, well, don't forget that this is given to you by Baba. And um, if somebody sees you having this particular capacity and they are attracted to you and they appreciate you, because you have this capacity or you have this talent and you are expressing this talent and so a lot of attention goes towards you because of this. Um, so if you see somebody who's like that then the question to ask oneself is uh, am I impressed by that person? And in Gyan, um, which is not at all like the rest of the world, you see, in the rest of the world, you're supposed to get impressed by people who are impressive. Whereas in Gyan, you're not, you see. If you get impressed by someone who's impressive, then it would be said, well, you forgot that um, the, the thing which impressed you actually comes from Baba and you got caught up in the person. And, and here is where the 
a difference of opinion comes up in the subject of appreciation. You see, so if I say, okay, I'm an instrument and in my spiritual practice I say, okay, I, I have nothing. I have nothing. Everything which is there is given by Baba, but I cannot lay claim to it. <coughs> Excuse me, I cannot say, you know, this is my capacity or this is my talent or this is my speciality, you see. Because Baba has told us that he has placed it in there, you see. And so the accurate spiritual relationship between a soul and the bestower is a recognition and an acknowledgement that this thing which is being, which is operating uh, as, as a talent or something, this is coming from Baba. You see. And, and he's been telling us quite a lot that we need to check whether or not we have this me pan. Me pan is the I ness. I ness and my ness. Of course, those are not English words, but you know what I mean by I-ness and my-ness. So, I-ness means I am something, and my-ness means I have something. And if we want to become free from that, then I am a soul which is essentially peaceful, pure, loving, uh, powerful and blissful, that's all. Nothing else, you see, I am that. And Baba has given us various titles which he has said, this is your self-respect, you know, I am a, a spinner of the cycle of self-realization, I am a seer of the three aspects of time, but I am a doctor, he didn't give us that, you see. <clears throat> or I am a an orator, he didn't give us that. So, so the titles that Baba has given us are there to, for us to be able to hold ourselves stable in our self-respect and be detached or disinterested in those titles that our body consciousness would claim that I am a this and I can do that. You know, and so the things which we want to be appreciated for when we have that hunger are these kinds of things, you see. And, and then he also has talked about, um, you know, which is also something Daddy Gulzar talks about quite a bit, is uh, action consciousness, right? Uh, action consciousness is, I did, I am doing, I have to do, I refuse to do, uh, these things, it's action consciousness. And so whenever we would feel unappreciated, it would be connected with this, I did this thing and you didn't appreciate me, you see. So, so um, in Gyan, <coughs> Uh, there is um, <clears throat> there is a lot of attention that that Baba has um, been um, placing on telling us. Okay, do you do you want to be soul conscious, or do you want to be body conscious? We say no, no. I want to be body conscious. I want to be soul conscious. I don't want to be body conscious. So okay, if you don't want to be body conscious then this thing that I did, that has to be removed. You see? So if I feel that oh, I did this, I gave this, you know, I gave money to God, for example, and Baba will say, excuse me, do you know who is the owner of the universe? You know? Uh, do you know 
Uh, do you remember that yeah, I am the uni uni owner of the universe and you are my child and whatever you have is because I gave it to you, so what are you talking about? You know? But in body consciousness you don't think that way. You think, no, I am very rich and I'm giving to the Brahma Kumaris or something like this, you see. <coughs> so that is, <coughs> excuse me, this, this state of of uh, really being worldly, you see. It's not um, surprising because we're very influenced by the prevailing attitudes, the prevailing social attitudes. But many of the prevailing social attitudes are based in ego. The, the world in which we live is very ego-based and uh, we are, are educated socially to believe that you have to be something, do something, you know, all this show has to be there and then you've made it. And then if you get appreciated by the other people in the world, then that's the sign, the definite proof that, yeah, you have made it, you see. And so the influence of this is very, very strong because in the world, these attitudes are considered to be values. These are values, you know. Whereas in Gyan, we are given a different perspective on these things. And what happens is if we are ha happening to be, or if we happen to be body conscious, then our orientation will be towards those worldly values. And then we will sort of translate them or try to bring them into Gyan. Uh, because we will say, no, this is a value and so Gyan should accept it, you see. And that is our, our body consciousness actually. So sometimes uh, it is said, I, uh, Baba doesn't love me. And, and sometimes that means Baba's not overtly appreciating me. And Baba's talking to this other person but not to me. Or Baba's giving this other person an opportunity but not me. And I have all these talents and Baba's not using them and that's not fair. You know, you, you have these different thoughts coming up. And all these things are tests. And we need to have these kinds of tests because it's very difficult for us to all of a sudden be not worldly because we don't know what that is. And when we hear the word worldly, again, it's a relative um, expression because we, we will feel, I am spiritual. You see, and such and such a way of doing things, that's worldly, but I don't do that, you know? And so if something comes along and says, no, what you are doing is worldly, then you'll say, no, it's not. That's not worldly, this is spiritual, you see. And then that same one will say, no, this is spiritual, and you'll say, no, it's not, that, that's not spiritual at all. That's too many limits, you see. And that's not, not really spiritual. So there's a lot of um, difference of opinion about these things because it's very difficult for us to be completely free from any kind of influence at all. So then uh, a question of faith comes up. Because in order for us to know what is really, really real in these very subtle areas, uh, and we're saying, okay, well, appreciation, what, what is the thing that uh, needs to be appreciated? <clears throat> and if we think very, <clears throat> excuse me, if we go very deep, and think, you know, okay, what is the thing that is to be appreciated most? 
it's rather like saying, okay, what is the thing that is most valuable? What is the thing that is the most loved? You see? So then the answer to that would probably be, well, Baba. The most valuable thing there is is probably Baba, don't you think? Here's Baba. Um, and then the other thing that's <clears throat> extremely valuable is me, the self, you know. Uh, uh, when you think about what a soul is, is absolutely extraordinary, you know. And then if you think, okay, a soul is this thing with these five aspects, peace, love, purity, power, and bliss. You see, these are our, this is our essence. Oh, excuse me. And so I think a very important way to do our spiritual practice is to try to empty ourselves of everything except those five things. And uh, to dispossess oneself because all of our uh, uh, talents and attributes that we say, this is mine, they may be very subtle things, but nevertheless they're connected with this life. They may be connected with something you've learned in this life, or you just got born with a certain talent and then you develop that. So, so I think it's just very good starting place to differentiate between what I am and the gifts I have come with, you see. So what I am becomes the foundation of my self-respect and the gifts that I've come with are the ways in which um, I can I can um, open myself uh, and say, okay, Baba, this is yours. It's not that I'm giving it to Baba, but more like I'm saying, actually, I have come to understand that the truth is that you gave these things to me. And I'm basically just these five things and anything additional is a gift from Baba. You see. So th this means that if um, I'm appreciated for one of these gifts that's given by Baba, then to be really honest and truthful, I would have to say, well, that's very nice, but we all know that the ori origin of these things is not me, but the bestower, you see. So we need to also learn the art of deflecting people uh, from thinking that we are the origin of our talents and deflecting them towards Baba who actually is the origin of the talents. And one of the ways that we can check ourselves and see whether this is really going on is what are my feelings when I'm appreciated or not appreciated? Because the test is, the test of this, whether we've understood it or not, the test is, are you neutral? If somebody appreciates you or somebody doesn't appreciate you, does it make any difference at all? I think we can only be neutral without having any, any feelings of self-aggrandizement or self-doubt when we really know that I am only these five things and everything else is a godly gift. And he uses this expression, Ishwarya Dain is it's a godly gift. And uh, then 
I don't have anything to give. I don't. So if I think I'm giving something, um, again it's a kind of ego. Again it's I-ness, minus. But practically speaking, we have all kinds of stuff, talents, money, this, that, time, and so on and so forth. And what we want to do with it is make it profitable, isn't it? Because these things which are given to us by Baba, these are, are things that can be used in Baba's service as an investment, you see. So on one hand he's given us things and on the other hand we have an opportunity to invest it. And to use this word investment is quite helpful uh, to keep us free from thinking that I have given something. I haven't given anything, I've actually invested something that was given to me in the yagya so that it's multiplied many times and it comes back to me. So I can't really say, well, I gave this. No, I took the opportunity to multiply my talents or my, uh, my gifts that were anyway given to me by Baba so that then it, it became more and better. And so Baba says, this is actually a way of appreciating what Baba has given us and appreciating why he has given them to us so that they can be multiplied, you see. And then there's, there's other situations where Baba wants to get something done through us and he can use any one of us for anything he wants, any time he wants, and you must have experienced this. And so whenever it's your turn for Baba to pick up the piece that you are on his great chessboard and he starts using you and moving you around, you definitely feel that there's an energy going through you and there's things happening through you that you're not actually capable of. Have you experienced this? And so whenever this is done, you get a commission. Definitely you get a commission. Because Baba does things through his instruments. And uh, any time y you get to be used, you definitely pick up a commission because uh, that's the deal between the self and Baba. So then the, the instrument has a certain duty, which is to be usable, you know. Like there's this prayer of St. Francis, you know, oh God, make me an instrument for your peace and all of these things. So if Baba uses us as an instrument for anything that he wants to get done, and we say, well, I didn't get appreciated, what is that? You know, it means we didn't understand what's going on. If Baba is doing something through us, where is the need for us to get appreciated? We got our commission. So if I'm asking for appreciation, what's going to happen to my commission? It's going to be deducted. Instead of added, it'll be deducted. So a feeling of emptiness can happen very easily when we take something as our own, which actually isn't our own, and then we um, have to pay for that. And the way we pay for it is, um, it, it makes us feel exhausted or empty or somehow lacking in achievement. And then we experience a state of discontent when we're feeling discontent, it's very difficult to appreciate ourselves or Baba or Drama or anyone else, you see. So then again, we make a comparison between the worldly views of appreciation, which presupposes that a person's talents are their own, 
and that the deal is between people. And so if you do something good, then somebody will appreciate you. So that means your karma is with another human being. So you do one thing, you get one from that human being or that collection of human beings. So it's not a very good deal as a matter of fact because you do a little and you get a little and you remain worldly basically, you remain ordinary. Here we come in Gyan and everything is different because we say, well, we understand the nature of the deal now and the deal is that we don't have the limitation of being able to deal only with human beings and as in bhakti they do deals with God indirectly. So they will give charity in the name of God with the thought that I will receive the return of that in my next birth. It's still one to one. <clears throat> Whereas Baba comes and says, okay, here's the deal. I'm God and I'm the owner of the universe and your souls and you just have these five things, nothing else. Everything else is given and you have the opportunity to um, interact with me in such a way that your um, assets are multiplied at a rate that is far beyond anything possible in human interaction. And so it's an invitation, really, to uh, give one and receive multi-millions for 21 births. So that's about the best deal ever. And if we lose consciousness of this and start thinking, well, I'm not appreciated, or uh, I gave, or I did, or I am, a any thought like this is called Maya because, you see, instead of doing this deal with Baba in which we gain an, an enormous amount for a little <clears throat> in this incredible investment, we uh, actually subtract from our fortune. And Baba is neutral. He says, okay, here's the deal, here's the offer. Uh, it's absolutely up to you whether you figure it out or not. And if you couldn't figure it out, that's tough. And if you did figure it out, that's great because then you become Lakshmi Narayan, you become healthy, wealthy and happy for um, you know, 21 births and uh, you enjoy Mukti, Jivan Mukti, every Kalpa and it's great. Um, <clears throat> but if you don't figure it out and you start operating in the worldly value system, then the, the experience is emptiness. You, you do a lot of effort and then you make a little mistake of saying, I did it or I'm not appreciated and immediately this huge uh, subtraction or deduction from your uh, spiritual account takes place and, and Baba has been said, you know, you need to be accumulating but instead of accumulating, you accumulate a little bit and then you lose it all and they have to start again and it's very tedious to do it that way. So once we understand that, and that is also an aspect of appreciation, we need to appreciate what this is, and what's happening, and what the deal is. And if you really do appreciate it in the sense of understand it, then it's possible to do uh, 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 your thoughts, your words, and your actions in such a way that each one is invested and uh, brings immediate profit, immediate fruit, and long-term profit and fruit as well. So these are very important um, things to distinguish. And the obstacle is that we lose awareness of this and we revert to the worldly way 
because the world defines its way as value-based. And in its own terms, it is indeed value-based, but in comparison with the terms of the spiritual reality that Baba is talking to us about, it's not value-based. It's actually loss-based. Uh, it's based in lack of understanding or, or insufficient information and um, inaccurate definition, you see. So when we're soul conscious, we remain aware of this and then we do the actions, the words, the thoughts that bring us profit. And when we're body conscious, we go into loss because we say, I'm not appreciated, I did, I am, I can't, I won't. These um, expressions or thoughts actually produce deduction from our account. So, from a spiritual point of view, I think we need to again and again position ourselves that the karma is me and Baba. My karma is with Baba. If I make my karma with someone, it's very different. If I make my karma with Baba, it's very different. Yeah, one of the things that is being told in the Murlis lately is, uh, and also is, uh, there should not be anyone in your head. You know, no people in here, only Baba. We, we should remember Baba. And so that's only possible if our karma is with Baba. So whatever it is that appears to be getting done uh, through me, that is Baba doing it. And the deal is between me and Baba. So if Baba's using me as an instrument, then I'm getting my commission. I don't need any appreciation from anyone because it's nothing to do with anything. You see what I mean? And if I start looking for that, then I cut off my interaction with Baba and I start having interaction with people. So Baba says, no, you are with all these people and you have duties. And so it's very important to interact with the people according to the choreography or the dance or the ritual, you can say, you know. And this is why we are recommended to be aware of our role, you see. So if I have this role, then I play it. If I have that role, then I play that. If I play this way in that role, it won't work. And maybe I'm just as capable. I need to understand what my role is, you see. And my role is not a hunger for the star part, but my role is uh, indicated to me by the drama. You see, something will happen in drama which will let you know, okay, go here, go there, do this, don't do that. And then you have to pick it up and say, okay, yeah, this is what's needed at this time, and then you do it. And always the thought needs to be there that um, my connection with Baba has to be very uh, accurate, very clear, because he's the director and I'm an actor, and he has to be able to direct me to do anything, you know, any time. If it's sweep the floor, okay, sweep the floor. If it's go on stage and deliver a lecture to a couple of hundred thousand people, then do that, but in the right way, you know. So we have to be very flexible and always connected with the director. Um, and, and if my karma is always with the director, then my relationship with the other actors is not to do with their behavior, but to do with my understanding of how I need to be acting in terms of my connection with the director, you see. 
And all the while, um, the task of Baba, which is to make heaven on earth and to bring everyone to a stage of liberation and liberation in life and for me to make my fortune and to inspire others to make their fortune uh, for me to be in connection with Baba and inspire others to be in connection with Baba then it's appropriate in the question of appreciation to somehow bring it into the atmosphere that hunger for appreciation which is otherwise also known as name and fame you know we want name and fame so if we can renounce that not have that hunger then we can be much more uh, aligned with Baba uh, closer to Baba and um, this hunger for name and fame, which is another way of saying a hunger for appreciation, which is another way of saying, let me become worldly again, then we identify that, that this is actually the pull of Maya. And Maya has to pull on me. It has to pull on me strongly and in new ways, you see. And I have to be able to identify, oh, this is Maya, that is Maya, this is the pull. And, and um, once you see it for what it is, then it becomes very natural to have a disinterest about it. If we don't see it for what it is, then it is said, well, it deceived you. You know, and, and you thought it was something that it isn't. You thought it was real, but it's not. You know, it's just a, a fake thing to trap you into going into loss. Because Maya's job is to make us go into loss. And our job is to um, go into profit and not go into loss. Why should I go into loss? So this is why Baba very often... Uh, couches it in terms of business, you know, is a, is the deal is I acknowledge that I'm empty except for these five things peace, love, purity, power and bliss and, and I personally find it very good to Go back to that base, you know, we have the base of Om Shanti, which is, I'm a peaceful soul. But these five qualities of the soul, if I focus on that, these are the, um, the highest values of what I am. And then anything else that's with me, it's a godly gift and it doesn't belong to me so that I have to dispossess myself of any feelings of possessiveness. If I say this is my idea or my talent or my um, whatever, you know, and, and say, no, this is a godly gift and it belongs to Baba and he will use it however he wants. That means I become a trustee of my gifts, but I also have to manage them. You see, manage them in the sense that multiply them. And as much as uh, we are trustees and, and um, available instruments for Baba to use it however he wants, that much you experience enrichment and um, you make your stage. Uh, because what we have to do is leave everything and everyone but not turn against everything and everyone but um, be able to let go I see. and if you're holding on to things then you're holding on to them but if you have let go they're there but you're not holding on so when they're moved around or taken away or whatever, you don't feel anything, you see. And 
if we feel empty inside in any way, then the sign of it will be a hunger for being appreciated. And sometimes even we will do this production of being very appreciative of people around us, but there'll be a hidden agenda that we want the return of that. We want to be appreciated back, you see. And that's, again, the deal with human beings. And then when we're dealing with human beings in that way, we have these desires that we want fulfilled. Then at that time we're not dealing with Baba. And this is why we experience this um, deduction from our account. Um, because we start dealing with people one for one, and then uh, we're not just only getting one for one, but we're also losing a lot. And so when you're going in loss, it's reflected in how you feel inside. It may be resentment, it may be depression, it may be all these other things. But what we need to, um, to appreciate is um, the spiritual realities and see the contrast between the reality of our relationship with Baba and the contrasting reality of our interaction with people. And um, when we go into interaction with each other, try to keep this awareness and when a test comes, try to identify what the test is and see clearly where I am a little weak, a little lacking in clarity about what's really going on. Because the purpose of the test is to make me really see the point. Um, when you fail tests, it's actually quite useful because um, you have such a bad experience that you remember this is not how you do things, you know. If you succeed, you don't learn so well because you kind of forget, oh, I did it right. Sometimes, when you really do it right, and you resist the temptation to do it wrong, and you say, oh, I, I made it, I did it, you know, that's good, and you can remember that, that for the next time, yeah, this is what we have to do. So there's a few thoughts, a huge subject, appreciation, but just a few thoughts that um, uh, that uh, we share together in this hour together. So I will stop now. Om Shanti. I know somebody has a question. <laughs> yeah, just. Well, yes, this is right. The certificate of appreciation from Baba and the family and the self. It, it's a very good point um, Sister Aruna is bringing up about um, we we are to uh, receive the the certificate. Uh, you could say it's certificate of appreciation, or it's also said uh, certificate of contentment. Are you content with yourself? Is Baba content with you? Is the family content with you? And Aruna Ben was also saying, you know, we sometimes may take the blessings as a barometer for our stage, which may or not may not be. Um, an accurate reflection. I think that, um, uh, she also mentioned this word, hunger. You see, if I'm not satisfied with myself, I can deceive myself and pretend to myself that I am this and I am that, but deep down, if I'm actually not, uh, 
I'll have to face that from time to time. And Baba has also said that you cannot make the family happy with you. Uh, when you try to make everybody happy with you, it's very easy for people to um, take advantage of that and, and continue to hold out and not be happy with you because you want something. But um, if we um, make ourselves accurate in these other ways that I was mentioning, make your karma with Baba fully a, a total thing, um, there may be, you know, people may be against you, they may be jealous, they may be critical or whatever, um, but we do have to pass through many tests, we have to not take things personally. Uh, it's quite a, a complex game that's going on, but if I'm real, I think that um, the certificate from the family will be there and the certificate for the, for, of the self will be there, and the certificate of Baba will be there. But if I'm trying to play, um, I will be deceiving myself. So, but it's, it's an interesting you know, thing to think about. And there's many other issues that may be coming up in, in uh, others of your, other, uh, some of your, your mind. Um, but these are some thoughts. And the question is about specialities, and about, because Baba says, know your specialities, and is that the same as gifts? And I think that it's very important for us to know our specialities, but I find also that if I say, okay, this is a gift, it may be my speciality, but it's still a gift, then um, I will not be be thinking, okay, this is my speciality and not a gift. It's mine, you know. So, yeah, we need to identify our specialities, but also as part of a recognizing that they're gifts and recognizing that, you know, make them available um, to Baba to use however he wants, because if I say this is my speciality and it has to be done this way and you have to use it that way, then again we're dictating to Baba and sometimes that can happen. If we don't understand our specialities, then we, we um, prevent, in a sense, prevent Baba from using us in the way that he may want to be using us, because we can get in the way and that's also there. Yeah.